All right, good, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is not important, uh, but everything else uh, should be. Uh, I'm going to do about nine minutes uh, out, of my, out of my show, and when I say nine minutes, I, I mean nine minutes. I'm not one of those guys. Um, you know, it's, it, it, it's about it's my show. I don't know if you can call it a show, but it's about facts, and it's about lies, and it's about what's going to happen and what could happen. And also, I'm not going to tell you what is true and what is not true, because I like it that way. I like, I like that you are a bit confused. And that's, that's, that's a good thing, I suppose. But to understand where we're coming from, we have to go back. Go back a little bit in time. We have to go back to the year 1972. And that's the year when, during the Olympic Games, 12 Jewish athletes were murdered by the Palestinians. And the West said, let's not get involved. Everything will be fine. And in 1972, there was this man. This, this is David Rosenham. And that is an American psychiatrist. And this man sent, in 1972, he sent eight perfectly healthy, normal people to eight different mental hospitals in the United States. And all that these people had to do was to come in in the hospital and say that they hear a voice, a voice in the head. And the voice only said one word, and that word was empty. That's the only lie they had to tell. And this is what happened. All diagnosis insane. Admitted to the hospital. These were the diagnoses that they received. In some cases, it took 54 days before they were released, and only when they admitted that they were they were feeling sick, but thanks to the treatment getting better. And when Rosenhan published these findings, a very renowned hospital said this would never happen to us. Send as much fake, fake patients as you want. And Rosenhan said, okay, give me three months. And three months later, the hospital came with a press release. And they said, out of our 192 patients, there are 41 fakes and 42 maybes. On which Rosenhan replied, I never sent anybody. From that moment on, the damage was done. From that moment on, the chaos was complete. From that moment on, we couldn't trust human diagnosis anymore. From that moment on, we started using questionnaires. People answer to objective questions. These answers go into the computer, and the computer determines what's wrong with you. And ever since that moment, we've been using this system. And we use it everywhere. We use it in schools. We use it on the workplace. We use it on dating sites. Everywhere. In 1972, the future officially started because we as human beings had to admit that we don't know it anymore but a computer maybe does and now we're stuck now we're stuck in a present that feels like a future a future that 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 that, that becomes more and more weird that's becoming scarier and scarier fact this is an image from the program pioneers of tomorrow and this is a children's tv program and it's, this is being produced by Hamas, the Palestinian terrorists. And this is a very popular program in the Arabic world. And it's presented by a girl, Sara Barhum, 11 years old, with a headscarf. But that's her own uh, decision. Nobody's forcing her, she says. And, and a guy in a buck suit, Nahul. And this is very popular. But some time ago, a presenter came on and said, Dear children, Nahul can't be here today because he was beaten to death by the Jewish secret service. And after Nahu came Farfur. And Farfur also died because he couldn't get to the hospital in time because of the blockade of the Gaza Strip. And after Farfur came Asut. And Asut also died because the Jews bombed his house. And it goes on and on and on with statements like this. <laughs> You know, uh, 
You can say what you want, but uh, that is some great children's TV. You know, I can't wait for the, Ble- for the Be- uh, Belgium version, you know, that you, you put on TV and some guy comes on and says, Dear children, Megha Mindy can't be here today because she was raped to death by two gay socialists. <laughs> Fact. These Islamic terrorists, they had, a, they had a lifestyle. They hate what we do. This, what we do right now, they hate it. They hate, they find this repulsive, but they love our technology. They love television, but they especially love the internet. And that causes problem because in the old days, it was simple. You had a terrorist who's calling another terrorist and who's saying, I'm going to blow this up. I'm going to wear this. Let's meet up. It's going to be fun, fun, fun. And all you had to do, A secret service is place yourself along this telephone line and you could hear everything they were saying. But now these terrorists, they use program as Skype. And what does Skype do? Skype takes that information and spreads it all over the internet. And it only comes together at the receiver. So at this moment, there's no way of placing yourself along these lines and hearing everything they're saying. At this moment, in 2010, there's no way of knowing what kind of terrorist attacks they are planning against us. The only thing that's keeping us asleep at night is the knowledge that at this moment there are 2.3 billion Muslims in the world and 7.9 million Jews in Israel. And still the Gaza Strip isn't liberated. So we know for certain they're also very, very lazy. Fact. (laughs) There is a a Jewish organization, not this one, but you know what I mean, and... um, And they go all around the world. They go all around the world looking for the DNA of Hitler. They buy everything Hitler ever touched. They buy his underwear. They buy his his combs. They buy his children. They buy his his dog whistle. They buy everything he ever touched. Because what they want to do, this organization, they want to take that DNA and they want to clone him. And if Hitler is cloned, they want to raise him. And when the clone Hitler is 18 years old, they want to sue him for the Holocaust. Fact. On the internet, there are, they, they found websites that nobody created. And after research, they have found that these websites, they take material, generic material from the websites ar- among them and around them. And they construct their own content. And they don't know how many of these self-created websites exist. They don't know if these websites are in contact with each other. What they do know for certain is that these websites are so fragile that too many visitors would be fatal. Fact. In cities like uh, Shanghai and Tokyo, they have found proof. Uh, no, on a different slide. Fact. Yeah, it's, it's all uh, prepared. This. Um, Laughter I'm a professional comedian, ladies and gentlemen. I do this for a living. It's free, isn't it, this? Okay. Um, Fact. In this country, uh, they're working on a law law proposal that that forces Moroccan teenagers to walk between 3.2 kilometers per hour and 4.5 kilometers per hour. Because there's a study that says that if a Moroccan teenager, a boy around 16 years old, if he walks faster than 4.5 kilometers per hour, it, it feels like he's running away from a crime. And that makes us feeling unsafe. But the same study also says that if a Moroccan teenager, male around 16 years old, walks slower than 3.2 kilometers per hour, he's, it looks like he's just hanging around. And that makes us also feeling unsafe. But the problem is they can't get the racist feeling out of the law proposal, so they're trying to sell it as road safety, with the slogan, slow down, Mr. Moroccan, but not too slow. (laughs) Fact. In uh, cities like Shanghai and Tokyo, I'm back, I'm back. In cities like uh, Tokyo and Shanghai, they have found evidence of primitive tribes. In alleyways, behind dumpsters, they have found food and, and tools which means, which indicates that in these cities, there are, there are primitive people who have never made contact with the outside world. Fact. Um, these are the images 
of the Armenian genocides during the First World War. This is a historical fact. You know, thousands of Armenians were, were murdered and slaughtered by the Turkish. But the Turkish refused to admit that this ever happens. They call it the Armenian debacle. But that's like saying September the 11th was the day some planes got lost. This is a genocide. This is what really happens. And this is the official statement of the Flemish Socialist Party. Fact. China has sent a space shuttle into space further than ever before, looking for intelligent life with only one message, which is, leave us alone, we have enough problems already. <laughs> Sometimes I open a chat box on the internet just to see what happens, just to see if, if somebody comes along in my chat box. And, and some time ago, I... Uh, you know, I opened one, and, 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 and a guy came, came in my chat box. He, he said he saw me uh, on TV. He saw me falling off a stage or something. And um, he said, can I show you something? And I say, sure, show me. And, and he sends me this, this huge file, really huge, huge, a lot of kilobytes, megabytes, 50 bytes, I don't know, huge, huge. And he says, click on it. And I click it. And, and the, the, the screen goes black, like this. Except here, here, some, wait, I'll zoom in, here. Here, here some, some you, you gotta look closely to see it, but, and, and I ask him, what is it? And he says, I made that. I'm like, uh, yeah, congratulations, but you know, what is it? I, I, is it a virus? And he said, no, 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 I made that, that is, virtual new life and he says you know i made that on my own computer and it lives and it learns and it grows and it loves me i am the father of that thing and i look at it and i think to myself that is the most beautiful thing that i have ever seen thank you very much <laughs>